Alright, welcome back to We Play Games. I'm Walker, and here we are in Humankind about to resume our tutorial series, but this, as I said, is more of a meta tutorial series than it is a let's play. We're going to talk about tips and tricks in each individual era as we play through them, and here we are in about to step into the classical age. But I think there's an important thing that we want to highlight before we do so, and that's critically what you should do on the last turn before you ascend into your next era. If you're here on this last turn before you flip over, you want to see if there's any way for you to score any extra fame, because fame is important, you don't want to neglect it, but at the beginning of the game you really do want to be trying to make as, as rapid progress through the eras as quickly as possible, just so you get a lot of legacy traits and a lot of stacking bonuses. But here, for instance, we have access to a copper mine. The copper mine doesn't cost a lot in terms of industry. You can, of course, build them early if you have a lot of influence, but we wanted to attach some stuff ASAP so that way our cities could grow. But here we have enough gold that we can actually just go ahead and click buy out on a copper mine. That in turn is going to give us one more district towards that building star. And that means that we scored a lot of extra fame just right there, locked it up before we do our, our ascension here. But if you're doing what I'm recommending and making very rapid progress through the eras, at least at the beginning of the game, then you should be aware that you're A, gonna need to start paying attention to fame a lot more once you get into the, the medieval era, but it also means that you're gonna have basically no competition whatsoever when it comes to picking stuff in both the classical and medieval, and for that matter, early modern most of the time. So you're gonna have your pick of the choice when it comes to whatever you've got here. I have done a tier list on the classical era, my general recommendation is that if it is available, take Morians. Influence does drop off pretty steeply as the game goes on, but at the beginning of the game here, Morians are incredibly, incredibly, incredibly powerful. This is going to make our cultural blitz a lot stronger than it was under the Joe, but simultaneously we're also going to get extra influence from emblematic districts. We're also going to access to a really, really powerful emblematic district here. The stupa is out Oh, it's just outrageously powerful, and I'll show you why in just a minute. And their their emblematic unit is also pretty good, although it is, again, very, very expensive, so you can't usually afford a lot of them. But if you can move into the Morians, I think generally you should. If you're really, really close to somebody like the Babylonians are right here on our border, then there's some consideration to picking a militarist culture. The militarist culture is, of course, the Huns and the Goths. They have the ability to declare war way more easily. They have a war support equilibrium value on relations of plus 30, which means you can declare wars really, really early if you want to. But if you're declaring an early war in humankind, be aware that you're gonna need lots and lots of population to support that. So that means during the ancient era, if you can get them, you probably wanna go into Harappans. But that's also gonna be kind of described by the territory that's near you. In this case, although our territory is very, very nice, we have access to both Mount Vesuvius as well as the Atacama Desert. Our population growth is gonna be very small on this territory though, because it's almost all industry, which means that our ability to support a war this early in the game is pretty limited. You need population in order to build units. You see here, minus one population if we build this archer, minus one if we build this warrior. But you you do need pops in order to fight wars, and because this is a low, low food start, we don't have that option available to us. That said, I'm not too heartbroken taking Morians. If you want to go Nazca, if you find a bunch of natural wonders near you, that can also be good, but Morians are bananas because of this thing right here, and because of course the Esteet ability and Guiding Light. All this stuff just stacks together. If you can take Morians, you probably should. So the real value of going into Morians is unlocked by a couple of different things. So you see here, religious rites. If we move into personal rights, we get minus 30 industry cost on religious districts, and the emblematic district for the Morians actually counts as a religious district as well as everything else. So taking the religious personal rights there means that we can build these stupa for really, really cheap if we want to. And, of course, they're going to get us lots of extra science, and there we're going to get tons of science without even picking up a, a science culture. So the science culture is generally at the beginning of the game not nearly as useful as you'd expect, uh, but being esteet here is also going to be neat because it's going to help us push Phoenicians out of our territory. The uh, You see here that the hold that King Gilgamesh has control over this territory culturally, that's going to give Gilgamesh grievances towards us. They might even declare war on us if we're if we're not careful during this time period. But by 
pushing out more culture onto these areas. We're going to push back against the, the Phoenicians, and hopefully we'll get to the point where we can beat them in a war, maybe during the medieval period with the Aztecs. Another really important thing when it comes to advancing into the classical era versus the ancient era is that your clear forests, which you, again, you're going to be doing some clearing at the beginning of the game just as a way to bust out as much territory as possible, it, you get way, way, way more industry clearing uh, a forest in the classical era versus the ancient. Another really good reason to make progress versus the, the ancient era here in Humankind. And here's something important to note in the classical era, if you're trying to get as many cities as possible, it's pretty easy to get up to a cap of four. All you need is the plus one city cap from philosophy and the plus one city cap from small council. That said, there's no reason that you can't have five cities in the, uh, the classical period. It just kind of depends on how much space you have because the first city over your cap is only going to cost you 10 influence per turn. Hopefully you have enough population that 10 influence per turn is not a big a big deal. Second city over your city cap though is 100 influence per turn, so you do want to be careful about pushing into to that territory. That's generally where you want to pick up the Achaemenids instead of just the, the Marians. But in order to get that much uh, territory, you kind of have to go to war in the ancient era. And that can be expensive or prohibitively impossible, depending on what your food start looks like during the ancient era. So depending on what you're, you're playing in and, and the setup that you have available to you, you're probably going to reach your first tenant for your religion in the classical or in the ancient era. There's a lot of debate as to how you should approach these things because there are some really nice stacking abilities, especially if you have a lot of religious districts like the Morians are going to. Taking stuff like Shelter True Oracles is a lot of extra influence, but fortunately you're going to get a lot of extra influence in the game pretty much no matter what. And abstain from intoxicants is very, very powerful. Extra industry on your religious districts is still very useful as the Marians. And of course, extra industry on forest and woodlands is a lot of total value that you can pick up. So I, I would say that generally, this is the recommended path for you to start on when it comes to the development of your religion. But if abstain isn't available, then of course, pick whatever you think is going to best play off of your current strengths. Seek Wisdom can be a lot of extra science, depending on how many strategic resources you have. Smite Unbelievers is, of course, absolutely critical in the event that you de get declared war on very, very early on. But Abstain from Intoxicants just works really, really well as long as you support it. Just take things that have a cultural emblematic district that count as religious districts, and you should get enormous amounts of industry very quickly. I think it's also generally recommended to pick at least one AI that you're willing to play ball with, because you can buy resources from them. If you buy luxury resources from the AI, of course it'll make them a little more wealthy and a little more powerful, but it in turn is going to give you access to the bonuses of the, the luxuries that you're buying from them, and of course it's it's going to start growing a trade route. That trade route is going to get you income, and of course it'll make the AI that you're trading with a little nicer towards you, and you can't afford to be at war with everybody at game start most of the time. So here's another really important thing to highlight. If you happen to notice an AI that is uh, has a stubborn bias, that means that A, they're going to fall really far behind in terms of getting a lot of legacy traits and a lot of passives stacking together, but it also means that that AI is going to be very, very good at scoring fame because it's going to intentionally keep the same culture throughout the entire game, therefore stacking an enormous fame bonus. The easiest way around this, of course, is either eliminate or vassalize the AI in question so that way they can't beat you. So I'm going to recommend that if you happen to notice a, a stubborn AI, don't pick them as your uh, your trade partner. Make sure that you eliminate them. Otherwise, you can you can lose to an AI that's on paper a lot weaker than you are. Depending on what your start looks like, I think generally the classical era is when it's most easy to just start building these industry building workshops. The uh, the industry buildings are of course scaled based off of what sort of resources you have access to in your cities, and therefore it's a little easier to get good value out of them once you've built a, a nice city out. And that's what the, the ancient era is all about. 
but if you find yourself in the position in the classical era where you're like, all right, this is plus 19 industry on stoneworks and it only costs 120 industry to get there, then that's where you like, you get a lot of extra value from, from building it ASAP. And of course, from attaching more things to your city's ASAP. Now, if you're sailing around in the classical era or the ancient era, it's important to note that if you end your turn on an ocean tile, you can spend one turn out there without being a, a special culture not dying immediately, but if you end your turn multiple times out there, the unit will die. So you do need to be careful about where you position your units while they are exploring. And of course, it's going to be really, really important for you to do some exploring if there's an ocean around, because that's going to give you an outlet to spend your influence, assuming that you are playing a steed. Now, as you make progress and as you settle territory, influence is going to drop off faster and faster and faster. Not only is it going to become more expensive for you to grab territory, but you can see here we've literally run out of space for our, our guys to go. So what that means, of course, is that in the medieval era, the Estite Star is almost certainly not going to be what we're moving into, but that's something that is contextual. You do need to pay attention to what sort of resources and opportunities are available to you in, in humankind and play to not only where your strengths are, but also just like what sort of resources are literally available to you. I think it's also important to note that shared projects are very, very powerful if you have a, a good opportunity to have a collaborative build between multiple cities. You can rush out some of the world wonders, get the extra fame, but also critically, the extra stability is gonna help us keep building stuff. And of course, cause we're doing some stacking on our religious districts, it's gonna be nice. And that's something that you do wanna pay close attention to during the classical period, cause that's when you're generally gonna have the resources you to throw at those sorts of big buildings. So here we are, I think at the end of the classical era for our playthrough with Morians. So we could potentially try to drag out the classical era just to get a little bit more in terms of stars, but I think we're, because of the location that we're here on the map, we kind of want to declare war on the Phoenicians ASAP. The reason being, of course, that we are out of territory for us to try to use our, our influence productively, but also, generally speaking, the AI does not do a great job of, of keeping up on its military technology if it's like behind on eras, and you can see here, Blue is still in the ancient era. That means that these guys should be pretty easy for us to raffle stomp if we can get a couple of swordsmen on the ground. And of course, the uh, the Aztecs here, they get access to land movement speed, industry cost. These guys are born to fight. But that's something we'll discuss in the uh, the next episode here on We Play Games with Humankind. All right, that's, uh, that's Walker. Take care.